Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Uh, we're going to go ahead and give folks uh, just a few more seconds to log in, and then we'll get started. Alrighty. Uh, good morning again, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's uh, Working Washington 5 grant application process webinar. We appreciate you uh, joining us this morning. Uh, a couple of quick introductions before we get started on the, today's program uh, with the Washington Hops Hospitality Association. My name is Andy McVicker. I'm on the communications team here at the association. Uh, we also have in the background who will be helping us with uh, any questions that might come in into their uh, area of expertise. We have uh, Kathy Fox on our membership team and Samantha Lauterbach on the state government affairs team. Uh, so if you have any questions that uh, pertain to their particular areas of expertise, uh, they'll be available uh, to answer those questions. Uh, the bulk of the program today, though, will be our guests from the Washington State Department of Commerce and Wa Arts. We have Lynn Fetch, who's a small business grants program manager uh, at the Department of Commerce, and Shannon um, Halberstadt, uh, the creative economy sector lead uh, at Commerce. And we also have Michael Wallenfels, who's the communication manager at the Washington State Arts Commission. So we appreciate their time uh, this morning to walk you through the uh, Working Washington Grant, Working Washington 5 uh, grant application process. A couple of quick housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, just a reminder, this webinar is being recorded. Uh, we will have a replay of this, uh, a video replay of this webinar uh, up on our website, wahospitality Dot org a little bit later this afternoon, along with the slide deck. Uh, we usually get a lot of requests for the slide deck. Uh, uh, Lynn and Michael will provide that to us this afternoon, and we'll post that to our website as well. Uh, so if you miss anything today or have to leave early uh, for any reason, uh, feel free to check back on our website and our YouTube channel. Uh, we will have a video replay and the slide deck as well. Uh, we have a lot of people joining us today, uh, and we anticipate a lot of questions will be coming in. So we would ask if you could please use the Q&A buttons uh, within Zoom, uh, not the chat button. If you want to chat, that's fine. But if you have a specific question uh, that you'd like uh, one of us to answer, uh, we uh, please emphasize the use of the Q&A button. Uh, that helps us keep, uh, keep the questions organized and uh, allows us to uh, post, uh, summarize and post the questions after, uh, after the webinar. We'll have those posted on our website as well. So please use the Q&A button for any questions that you have uh, throughout the webinar. Uh, Shannon uh, with uh, Commerce will be answering those questions as we go throughout the presentation. So don't feel like you have to wait until the end. Uh, if you have a question, go ahead and ask it at any time using the Q&A button. Uh, and uh, we will try to answer those uh, as soon as we can. And just lastly, I just wanna plug uh, uh, the up next upcoming webinar we're having uh, at the Washington Hospitality Association. It is on cybersecurity, a growing topic, unfortunately, uh, as uh, more and more businesses are realizing uh, that this is an issue that is of utmost concern these days. Uh, so if you are interested in learning how to better protect your business uh, and your data, uh, check us out on wahospitality.org in the events section. Uh, August 24th, we will be having a webinar on cybersecurity. Uh, that's all I have for housekeeping. Now I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Lynn and Michael for their presentation. Thank you, Andy. Uh, and I wanna thank uh, the entire team at Washington Hospitality Association for helping to arrange this webinar and everybody who's on the call. Uh, we're really glad to have this opportunity to share this opportunity with you. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So today we are gonna be talking about the Working Washington Grants Round 5 and the Convention Center Grants programs. Um, we're gonna talk about the programs briefly and the applications. What does the Department of Commerce do? You can kind of see a bird's eye view of all the different activities that the Department of Commerce is involved with. And I also invite you to learn more about the Arts Commission at arts.wa.gov. Uh, but the focus of our presentation today will be these grants. So I'm going to move right on. Today, we're going to be doing an overview of both these programs. We're going to talk about the eligibility criteria and the requirements for applications. 
what gets considered once an application is sent in for review, the grant awards, the technical support center, the timeline for both these grants, the grant portal itself, and then of course, we'll be dedicating a lot of time to the actual application. And then finally, we'll have some additional resources for you to consider and write down. So what is Working Washington Grants Round 5? This comes from 70 million that was allotted by the legislature, and 60% of it is dedicated specifically to businesses and nonprofit organizations that are in the arts, heritage, and science sectors. This includes those operating live entertainment venues. And the other 40% goes to most other sectors, including a word you're probably all very familiar with there on this slide, hospitality, but also fitness, taxis, and personal services. The maximum grant award based on the legislation is 75,000. Kind of your bird's eye snapshot of this program is that it offers one-time grants to small for-profit and nonprofit businesses that experience hardship financial hardship due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the public health measures that were put in place as a result. What do you need to be eligible for working Washington round five? Well, you need to be an active for-profit or nonprofit business or organization. You need a UBI or an EIN if an EIN is applicable. You need to be located physically here in Washington state and you need to have been in operation prior to January 1st of 2021. In terms of the finances, you need to be able to show financial hardship because the pandemic we will be looking at where you fill that in in the application later on in this presentation. Um, you need to have not reported more than 5 million in income in 2019 and at least 10,000 in income in 2019 or 2020 I should clarify revenue. And of that revenue, at least 51% needs to have been generated here in Washington state. Some other considerations, these funds that you would get from the grant cannot be used to pay other government fees or taxes. You need to have not permanently closed or intend to close in 2022. You need to have followed all COVID-19 health requirements. And this will come up in a later slide. I'm gonna mention it here too. If you have more than one business, you can only apply for one. So we encourage you to apply for either your largest or your most impacted business or nonprofit. Who is ineligible for Working Washington grants round five? Um, quite a few, but if you're familiar with past uh, Working Washington grants, there won't be a lot of surprises here. The full list of these ineligible entities is all published online, so don't feel like you need to scramble on this slide. Like I said, this will be recorded as well, and all these ineligible entities are published online. Um, you can see at the top some things like multinational corporations, child care providers, schools, public libraries. And I'll draw your attention to the science companies. The science component of round five, think more like science centers, maker spaces. This isn't like life sciences or research laboratories. Switch now to the Convention Center Grants Program. $5 million was set aside for the Convention Center Grants Program. And for this one, eligible applicants need to show that at least 25% of their revenue is created in part by conventions hosted in Washington State. And just as an example, so don't think of, for example, the Washington State Convention Center itself, that building, um, but the kind of businesses that depend on conventions that happen there. And this applies not just the Washington State Convention Center, but any kind of conventions that happen across Washington State, those businesses that need that activity for their livelihood. The grant awards go up to $500,000 for the Convention Center grants. And our snapshot is this program offers one-time emergency relief grants to for-profit and nonprofit businesses that depend on the economic activity that come from conventions hosted in Washington. What do you need to be eligible for the convention center grants? It's very similar to the Working Washington Grants Round 5 program. You need to be an active for profit or nonprofit. You need a UBI or an EIN if it's applicable. Here's something specific to the convention center grants. You need to have hosted an in person convention or depended on the function of the convention to sell goods and services. Or, or cancel the convention or experience a reduction in participants in 2020 or 2021. And you'll need to provide financial documentation for the years 2019, 2020, and 2021. Just like round five, this is pandemic relief money. You need to show financial hardship because of the pandemic. Specific to the convention center grants, you need to have made more than 25% of your revenue from conventions and not have reported more than 100 million in income in 2019. But like the Working Washington Round 5, the minimum income is 10,000 in 2019, and 51% of that revenue needs to have been generated here in Washington. And here in the final category of other, this is identical to Working Washington Round 5. You cannot use these funds to pay for other government fees or taxes. 
can intend to close or have closed in 2022. You need to have followed all the COVID-19 health requirements. And like I suggested with Working Rush in round five, if you have more than one business, focus on either your largest or most impacted business. You can only apply for one. Who is ineligible for the convention center grants? Most of these bullet points are identical to Working Washington grants round five, but you'll see those first two are specific to convention center grants. These would be, for example, businesses that make less than 25% of their annual revenue for convention center activities, and also trade shows or exhibitions that are professionally exclusive conventions, conferences, or summits. And like round five, all these ineligible entities are published online. What do you need to apply? You'll need an active Washington State UBI. That's a unified business identifier. It's be a business license, business registration, tax registration, um, an employer identification number, EIN, if applicable, that says is, but please read it as if. You will need a unique entity identifier, a UEI. Uh, and this is a, a number issued by the federal government and is required to receive funds from the federal government. And because the funding for both Working Washington Grants Round 5 and the Convention Center Grants programs comes from federal funding, you will need a UEI in order to get funds dispersed to you if you are eligible and approved for funding. You can apply, you can be approved, but you cannot get the funding until you have that UEI. So if you don't have one now, start that process today if you can, and as soon as possible if not. You'll need a valid government photo ID of the business owner or the authorized nonprofit representative. There will be an identity verification process for the applicant in your annual business revenues for the years 2019, 20, and 2021. Note that businesses established in 2020 only need to put in their 2020 and 21 revenues for work, working Washington round five. However, you will need to submit your 2019 revenues for the convention center, get, convention center grant program. What will you upload when you're actually filling out the application? You'll upload a picture of your government issued photo ID of the business owner or the authorized nonprofit representative. If you're a tribal member owned business, you'll have verification of that, such as license or registration from federally recognized tribe, Washington State. And you'll need that financial documentation for the years 2019, 2020, and 2021. And similar to the, the disclaimer of the application that I just listed, the businesses established in 2020 need to only upload those 2020 and 2021 documents for work in Washington 5, but you will need the 2019 documents for the Convention Center Grant Program. What kind of documents uh, can you submit for the financial documentation? Here's our list. You can see everything from the IRS Form 1040 for sole proprietors through the 1065, the 1120, 1120S. Um, and for the nonprofits, the IRS Forms 990, sorry, 990, 990EZ, and 990N, or for the fiscally sponsored nonprofits only, a profit and loss statement. What will be considered when the applications are reviewed? They'll be looking for a reduction in revenue or activity between 2019 and 2020. For the convention center grants, they'll also look into the size of your business as measured by your 2019 revenue and a reduction compared to 2020 and 2021. They'll consider recent working Washington grants that your business has received. Um, they'll look into whether or not you're operating in a distressed area or if, you're, if the business is owned by someone from a historically disadvantaged or underserved population. For example, consideration may be given to business owners who self-identify as minority, veteran, LGBTQ, or women. For the eligible nonprofit businesses, this comes from their mission. So the mission must provide support for those services to underserved or underrepresented communities. And you can see there's a full list there of what the 15 counties are that are identified by the state as a distressed area. I'll pass it off to Lynn Fetch to carry on for the next few slides. Thank you, Michael. So grant awards. So grant award amounts will vary. So all grant amounts are subject to review and adjustment pending application volume and magnitude of reported losses. These grants do not need to be repaid. However, all taxes associated with the acceptance and or use of cash awarded are the, the sole responsibility of the individual grantee. So you can refer to our FAQs for additional information. And we just ask that you contact your financial advisor or the Department of Revenue for questions related to your own situation. And UEI number is required to receive a grant award. 
So we do have a UEI application information on our commercegrants.com website. If there's a, a link right here that you'll easily be able to click um, once we send the slides after this presentation. But if you go to commercegrants.com, on the very, very top of that page, there's a hyperlink, um, an actual page called, titled UEI um, application information. If you click on that page, we've provided a bunch of helpful information for how to register for your UEI. There's a helpful video tutorial if you need help. And then if you are experiencing any difficulties, there's information on that page of who to contact for technical assistance. Next slide, please. So grant awards continued. There is no reporting requirement after the grant is awarded. So you will be required to have provided a valid UBI number and complete bank wire instructions to receive the funding if and when awarded. So the Department of Commerce is not requesting receipts as part of the grant award, but in the event of, a, of an audit, you must show proof of expenditures. So make sure you retain documentation for at least six years. Our funds will be distributed through our partner submittable via US Bank using a direct bank transfer of funds. So knowing your correct business bank account or routing number for your bank branch is critical to successfully obtaining your funds and making sure that if and when awarded, there's no issues with trying to send the funds to your bank. Next slide, please. So recap of grant program details. To, you can access and review the information through our website, commercegrants.com. And once you get to commercegrants.com, there'll be information um, you can link on learn more right now. Uh, once the application portal goes live next Wednesday, the morning of August 17th, the link will change and it'll say learn more and apply now. But right now you can go to commercegrants.com. We have information, program guidelines and eligibility. There's information for frequently asked questions. And there's also going to be PDF versions of the application itself that you'll be able to access. That way you'll be able to um, you know, print it out, have the actual application in front of you. You'll be able to review the application and prepare before you actually log in online and start the application process. So general timeline, the grant portals for both Working Washington and the Convention Center grants open the morning of August 17th, that's next Wednesday, and they close Friday, September 9th at 5 p.m. PT. The application portals will be open for 24 days. We'll be reviewing applications between mid and late September. And then early October, we'll begin notifying grantees and dispersing funding. Next slide, please. Technical support. So come next week, we will have translated materials available for download. There's 15 languages we're translating materials into, Spanish, Vietnamese, Russian, Ukrainian, Tagalog, Somali, Korean, Arabic, Punjabi, Amharic, Khmer, sorry if I said that wrong, Chinese, Mandarin, Lao, and Marshallese. And then again, August 17th, the portal's open. We will have email and phone support in English, Spanish, Chinese, and Russian. The phone number is right here. It's an 888 number, 888-242-0169. And the email, the email for customer support if you have questions about your application or anything else related to the program, we will have customer service um, accessible and opening the morning of August 17th. You can email commercegrants at submittable.com. I wanna emphasize that we encourage all applicants to email for the quickest response. So that way um, it, it will avoid long delays with leaving messages and, and uh, our phone support team trying to contact you back and leaving messages back and forth. So just emphasizing, if you have um, questions or need assistance, need help of any sort, um, please attempt to email first, um, commercegrants at submittable.com. And that will be available starting the morning of August 17th. So the grant portal. So Commerce has partnered with Submittable to host the application portals for both Working Washington Round 5 and Convention Center grant programs. When the portal opens, you will actually need to create a submittable account if you don't already have one. If you have a submittable account, for example, if you applied in round four or around uh, the Border Business Relief Program at the end of last year, and you already have a submittable account, you can log in with your submittable account that you already have 
if you have forgotten your password, there's a forgot password button that you can click and it'll just send a forgot password reminder to your email and you can update your password and gain access. If you don't have an account, you'll simply need to create one by entering an email address and a password, and then you'll be able to access the portal and begin your applications. All answers on the application portal need to be in English, so please consider using a translation tool like Google Translate to help translate your responses if you need to into English before submitting the final application. And then our technical partners can email Commerce if additional language support is needed. And applications must be submitted electronically through the portal. We are not accepting uh, paper copies. Next slide, please. Thank you. Application features. So the applications are mobile friendly and usable on smartphones and tablets. It is available on multiple browsers. We do recommend using Google Chrome, Mozilla, Firefox, Apple Safari as browsers. Internet Explorer, for example, is not supported. So you can access whether on your smartphone, tablet, or computer to apply for this grant. When you're actually walking through the application and filling in the application, the applications will automatically save your work. There's also a save button at the very, very bottom of the application portal. So please make sure to note your account login and passwords. So you're able to access your application later. Once you do submit your application, you will not be able to edit or make corrections to your application after it is submitted. So just keep that in mind. You don't have to fill in the application all at once. You can fill in parts or portions of the application, save it and come back to it later. That way it'll give you the chance to review for information for accuracy before you hit that um, final apply button. There is also a collaboration feature. So when you actually access the portal and we'll give you screen, uh, the screenshots here in a moment so you can see where this feature is located. But when, when you're actually in the application itself, you can invite a trusted partner, a family member, a manager as a collaborator for assistance. The collaborator, collaborator will be able to complete the form fields and review your application, but they will not be able to sign the application or click apply on your behalf. So what happens after you actually hit the apply now button the grants are not first come, first served. So don't stress that you have to submit your application right when the portal goes live next Wednesday. Once the portal, grant portal closes on Friday, September 9th at five o'clock PM PT, the Department of Commerce will begin reviewing applications. Email notifications will be sent from Submittable. They will not be sent from Commerce. So keep that in mind. Notifications regarding your application and your submission will come from Submittable at notifications at email.submittable.com. You can expect, we can expect award notifi notifications to go out via email in early October. So again, the UEI requirement, if you did not provide your UEI number in the application because you're in the process of getting it, or you're having difficulties and trying to get the issue resolved to get your UEI number, um, a follow-up form will be sent from Submittable so that you can provide that number. So I just want to, again, emphasize providing your UEI number in the application is highly encouraged just to avoid review delays. So don't wait to begin your registration. Um, it is a requirement to um, receive grant funds if awarded. So that's one thing, one step um, that you can take now is to start the registration process early. And then application steps. Um, there are several steps to completing the application process. One, we um, advise and, and recommend that you review the program guidelines and FAQs before you begin the application. Then you'll actually access the portal through commercegrants.com on the morning of August 17th. The link will change right now. It's just learn more, but the link will say apply now. And it'll direct you to a submittable account landing page where you'll create a submittable account or log in if you already have a submittable account um, for example, if you applied in previous rounds, rounds four, um, then you likely already have a submittable account. You'll have to walk through eight eligibility questions before it kicks you over into the actual application itself. The application has multiple sections, business information, business background, business support, identity verification, an upload section, and then certifications and signature. 
So from this point on, we'll be looking at actual snapshots of the grant portal. Um, if anybody has gone to the portal page to look at FAQs and guidelines, you'll recognize these images uh, and some of the um, uh, just visual elements from this website. So you'll start by signing in to your submittable account or creating one if you haven't created one yet, just as Lynn was describing. And from here, you'll select whichever grant you're going to apply to, and we'll be looking at the Working Washington Grants Round 5, um, but these applications are very similar. So it'll start, as Lynn was mentioning, with an eight-question um, eligibility quiz. So you can see these are the first four, um, and the last four are here. And you'll recognize a lot of these questions. Uh, they were part of the eligibility review that we did earlier in this presentation. So when you successfully complete the eligibility quiz, you'll see this. You'll say, welcome, you are eligible to apply. And they'll give you a reminder of the deadlines, September 9th at 5 MPT to be considered. Um, and again, where you can sign up for notifications uh, at notifications at email.submittable.com. Um, that's where you'll get the notification of an award by early October. You'll scroll down to apply and you'll see an opportunity to jump out and review the FAQs if you need to and some assistance um, if you need additional assistance. And finally, some reminders of what you will need to apply. The first information you'll be putting in is your legal business name. And secondly, if applicable, you can see this does not have a red asterisk, your business DB, this is your doing business as if applicable. You'll be asked if you're registered with the federal government as a nonprofit. You'll be asked if your business has a unified business identifier, a UBI. Uh, and there's some information here about a UBI, if this is new to you um, or your collaborators. But that reminds me, I'm gonna jump back real quick and point out um, that collaborator. So when you complete successfully the eligibility quiz and you get this welcome page, you can see here in the upper right, this um, link that says manage collaborators. This is the place to click. You'll get a little pop-up window where you can put in contact information and invite someone to collaborate on the application with you. And this is the only place to do it in the application. It's right here at the top. Once you land inside the application, it is one long scroll to the bottom. There won't be page two, page three. It is one long thing. So if you are getting halfway through the application and realize, oh, I should bring in such and such a person to help me with this, scroll back up to the top, you'll be able to click that link and invite someone in to collaborate with you. So you'll be asked also, does your business have a unique identity, a unique entity identifier, the UEI? As, Liz, as Lynn mentioned, this is extremely important um, and it is an action that you can start to take now. You'll be asked if you have a federal employee identification number. Um, this is as applicable. Uh, you can see down there, you can select no if you do not have an EIN because you are a sole proprietor and it's not required. So again, this EIN is required if applicable. You'll be asked to put in your business street address. Um, this, these sections will be very familiar to anyone who's ever filled out a form where they have to put in just basic information about the physical location of their business. You'll be asked if you operate out of an address that's different from your business address. Um, if you click on yes here, you'll get another um, form field to fill out uh, where you'll be able to put in that additional information to make that distinction. Question number nine here is about your NAICS codes. Uh, and these are codes that kind of identify um, segments or industries. And uh, when you select the first one, uh, you'll have a drop down menu here. Uh, you'll be able to also then um, select an additional six digit identifier to kind of further clarify the NAICS code category that your business falls into. And if you're unfamiliar with the NAICS codes, um, there'll be links here um, where you can explore what these are and kind of a little bit more understanding about what the NAICS code category is. You'd be asked what year did you start your business? And questions 11 and 12 here, um, these are open text fields. Uh, so for question 11, you'll be asked to describe your business and its product services or activities. This is your time to uh, talk about your business and, or your nonprofit and, and what it is and, and what you do. Um, and for both these questions, 11 and 12, you're not being evaluated on your writing style, on your spelling, on your grammar. That's, that's not the focus of this. So please, please don't sweat that. 
what we're really after is um, just you explaining in your own voice what your organization is, what it does, and then in question 12, describing the financial hardship that your business experienced because of COVID-19. Because there's really two stories. There's the story that your tax documents will tell, and then there's the story that you tell us yourself about your, your actual experience, the narrative experience. And again, we really wanna emphasize, this is not about your writing style. This is not gonna be graded or evaluated on spelling or your technical abilities with writing. This is just your chance to explain more and us to learn more about your business and what you experienced during the pandemic. All right. And we'll be asking for your basic business background, your revenues for 2019 and for 2020. Um, you can see that they want you to enter numeric digits only um, and do not include commas or decimal points so you can round up or down as necessary. And then again for 2021, you'll have a basic demographic uh, question here, question number four that says my business is at least 51% owned and operated. Um, and then there's a list of demographic uh, options to select from. You can also choose I decline to answer or none of the above. And I want to call attention to that parenthetical there. For the nonprofit businesses, you select the communities that you provide support or services to as identified in your mission statement. We understand that's different for for-profit and nonprofits, so that's the distinction that gets made there. From here, I pass it back to Lynn. Thank you, Michael. And then we head into the business support section. This is a very brief section. There's two questions in this section. Uh, the first is indicate whether funding will be used to maintain operations or assist in reopening of your business if it, was, if it was forced to temporarily totally close. You can select maintain operations or assist in the reopening. And then um, uh, as Michael explained too, there are descriptive uh, short sentences underneath some of the questions providing additional details for information for help in it and um, uh, uh, providing uh, uh, more information. So for example, uh, solicit, uh, select assist in the reopening if you ceased all business activity or did not earn business income for at least one week between March 5th, 25th, 2020 and March 28th, 2021. So where possible, we try to provide explanatory text and or links to helpful information to provide guidance if, if there's um, you don't quite understand the question or you want more information. And then here in question number two, um, this is simply asking if you want Commerce to share your contact information with other organizations that may also have business relief grant funds available and simply select yes or no. Next slide, please. And the next section. So now we're heading into the verification sections and the upload sections. So the next section is an identity verification section. The, this step in the application just helps to ensure grant funds go to legitimate businesses such as yours. So the identity verification step is to be completed by the person actually filling out the application. So you'll be prompted to select whether you wanna take a photo of your ID and take a selfie. So you, you'll need a current device with a working camera, or you can just answer simple questions about yourself. If you select take a photo um, of my ID and take a selfie, You'll be prompted with this message, message that says you have chosen to take a picture of your ID card and selfie. Click proceed to continue. And then the acceptable forms of ID, government, government issued photo ID, passport, tribal ID card, residence permit, driver's license, something with a photo on it. You'll click proceed. And then you'll simply be prompted to take a screen, um, a selfie with uh, your current device and take a quick uh, photo of your ID. So you can have it um, you know, laying down on, on a counter, on a table and take a quick screenshot of your ID. And then it will just process through and you can move on to the next step. So next slide, please. If you select answer questions about myself, a prompt will say you have decided to answer some questions about yourself. Please click the proceed button below to enter your identity details, then click initiate quiz. So once you hit proceed, you will be asked to enter um, information about yourself, your name, social security number, um, potential uh, uh, address information. That way it can generate a, a quiz similar to how um, the IRS website does to gain access to your account and other banking institutions as well. 
So if you select that button and click proceed, um, after you enter in your information, it'll populate a, a very brief quiz and you just answer those questions um, you know, truthfully and it'll just uh, uh, and hit proceed next after that. And then you'll be prompted uh, that your quiz was complete and you can move to the next section. So here you have two options too. So you can either, when you, once you get to the identity verification step, it's really very, very simple. Just, just choose what, you, what your preference is. You can either take a photo or answer questions about yourself. We've tried to provide flexibility where possible. Um, so just choose the one that you're most comfortable with. Next, please. And this is the photo ID upload section. So this is where you'll upload the business owners or authorized nonprofit representatives valid government issued photo ID. So for example, if you are a manager uh, filling out this application on behalf of a business, you would actually be doing the identity verification set because you are the one applying. But when you get to this section, this section is asking for uh, to upload the business owners or authorized nonprofit representatives valid government sh issued photo ID. So I just wanna call out that, that distinction. This is where um, you will need to upload the actual governing person's uh, photo ID here. If, if you're not the business owner or nonprofit representative, if you're not the same person applying, basically. Next slide, please. And then we head into the financial document upload section. So this is the same list as presented previously. Um, you'll be asked to upload financial documentation for 2019, 2020, and 2021, gross annual business revenues. And then the list of acceptable financial documentation is listed right here below. Next slide, please. And then there'll be three areas for you to identify what financial documents you will be pro providing. So this is for 2019. You can select all that apply. And then once you select which forms you're going to apply, thank you, Michael, and they look the same for 2020 and 2021. Once you select the form that you're going to be providing from this list, there'll be a little box that populates and you just click the button and upload the document. Next slide, please. And then we head into our certification section. This is the very end of the application is the certifications and signature. So there's eight certifications that you must review and select the checkbox to confirm each certification. This is certification one and certification two. And then we have certification three um, and then certification four. So certific these certifications are just your um, attestations to um, the requirements set forth by the legislature, the requirements of the program guidelines. You're attesting to the accuracy and information of your business activities. You're attesting to the accuracy of the information you've provided um, in your application and acknowledging certain uh, other uh, uh, acceptable uses of funds. Next slide, please. And then this is slides five and six, um, slide uh, certification, I'm sorry, slide, <laughs> certifications five and six. Again, these are consistent with requirements set forth by the legislation and proper use of funds for this program. And then lastly, certification seven and certification eight. Um, certification eight specifically is the certification that, again, calling out that UBI requirement um, certification eight reads, I certify that if I have not provided my UBI number in the application, my business is in the process of applying for one. I acknowledge my business must provide a valid UBI number to receive grant funds and not providing a valid UBI number will make me ineligible to receive a grant if awarded. So if you were unable to provide your UBI number in the application because you're in the process of getting one, you can still select the certification. It, I'm just calling this out because it reads that you're in the process of applying for one. So don't get concerned about that if you're struggling or having issues, uh, you know, registering for um, your UEI number and don't have the opportunity to provide it in the application. This you can still accept this certification. Um, just make sure you read it and understand it. Um, also, do I just want to call out to the application portal is open for 24 days. So if you're in the process of registering for your UEI number, keep in mind that. 
you can save your a draft application of your application um, and you don't actually have to hit apply on the very, very first day of the portal um, going live too. So for example, if you're in the process of getting your UEI number and maybe you're getting it in a few days or you know it's taking you a couple of days, um, you can actually leave your application in draft form and come back and enter your UEI number you know, a couple of days later when you actually receive it before you hit apply. So that is also an option as well. I just wanted to provide that as a, a potential way of just saving your application and coming back and filling in your UEI number a few days later. Just make sure you get your, you hit that apply button within the portal window because we can't set, accept applications after the September 9th, five o'clock PM PT deadline. And then lastly is the signature line. So this is where you'll enter your name, your title, and your contact phone number. And in the event we're unable to reach you, we provided an option for you to name another, another individual that we can contact about your application. So some, you can simply, and this is optional, you don't have to um, provide another um, individual, just enter their name and contact phone number and then select the box that confirms that you're giving us authorization um, to discuss this application with the individual listed above. Again, this is optional. It's not a requirement that you add another individual here. And then lastly, here's just some follow-up information and reminders before you actually get to the point where you're gonna submit your application. So the Washington, we will not be accepting applications after five o'clock PM on September 9th. So correcting mistakes or making edits after your application has been submitted is not allowed. Just remember to review our FAQs um, if you need to withdraw an application if needed. So for example, if you do submit your application within the application portal window and you realize uh, there's something wrong, you can't make edits or corrections to your application. What you're actually gonna have to do is completely withdraw your application, start the whole application all over again fresh. So. There is information in our FAQs how to do that, um, but that is the only option that we have for correcting mistakes or making edits. To complete your and submit your application at this point, you're just gonna hit apply now. Um, you will get an email notification to your email, a, just a submission notification that your application has been submitted. Um, sometimes your email service provider will sometimes try to predict spam and sometimes these notifications can end up in your spam box or your promotions folder. So the email address that you should keep an eye out for is notifications at email.submittable.com. And you can safe, safe list this email address too. Um, and we've given some instructions on how to go about doing that um, in the application. There'll be hyperlinks here. We also have this information in our FAQs and our technical FAQs as well. Um, so just, just remember, that email notifications will not be coming from Commerce, it will be coming from our partner submittable. And then once you get to this point, you do have the option, you can save draft and come back to it later if you wanna look at it with fresh eyes the next day, something like that. Or you can simply hit apply now and your application will go through. And lastly, here's some follow-up reminders about the program in general, where to go. So keep in mind this commercegrants.com is always our number one place to go access the information. In addition to the Working Washington Five grant programs and the Convention Center grant programs, we are, there's also information about other potential opportunities for funding uh, through commerce that your business may be eligible for too. So this is our commercegrants.com page, our site, where we post all of our upcoming you know, funding opportunities through OEDC at Commerce. So it's really important that if interested, you can check back frequently to our site and there will be other opportunities that your business may be eligible for too. Remember the application portal date is August 17th, Wednesday, August 17th. We will be um, opening the portal the morning of and then closing September 9th at 5 p.m. That's a Friday. So the portal will be open for 24 days. We will have translated materials up by next week to, uh, available for download in 15 different languages. Remember to read the program guidelines of frequently asked questions. There's a ton of helpful information in our guidelines and in our FAQs. And then the morning of August 17th, you'll be able to get support via email or phone from our customer support center. Just We're just encouraging email for quicker response, if you can remember that. 
And then where to go to register for a UEI. You actually register for a UEI through SAM.gov. It is a federally issued number. It is not a state issued number. And if you need assistance, we have um, built a UEI application information page. It's a helpful um, uh, guidance page on our site, commercegrants.com. There's a link at the top of our page that has a lot of information, including a video walkthrough tutorial about how to register for a UEI. So if you're stuck or wondering what a UEI is, trying to get um, information on how to apply, please review that page because all the information and resources are there and available for you um, to provide that assistance. And then if you wanna get um, email updates regarding Working Wash Round 5, you can go to arts.wa.gov backslash WWR5 and sign up for email updates about the program. And that concludes our walkthrough presentation of the Working Washington Round 5 and Convention Center Grants eligibility criteria and application walkthrough. Um, just as a reminder too, we reviewed the application for Working Washington Round 5. Um, if you are a business that's um, considering applying for the Convention Center Grant program, the Convention Center Grant application is almost identical to Working Washington Round 5. It's structurally exactly the same has the same certifications. The only difference um, is uh, a few of the questions in the application so that those are geared you know, towards the Convention Center Grant Program itself. Otherwise, um, those, the, the applications itself are almost identical. Excellent. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Lynn. And Mike, Michael, do you have any final thoughts or is, are, are you? Done with your presentation as well, or? Yeah, I'm also done with the also done with the present presentation, and uh, I see there are some questions in the Q and A. I'm sure I know Shannon's been at them. I bet Lynn has some has some answers too. Yeah, absolutely. I just uh, we we've got a little bit of time left, so uh, Lynn or Michael, if you if you take a look at the Q and A, Shannon's been doing a great job answering those. I've been seeing that uh, in real time. But if there's anything you want to add. Uh, add to that. Uh, now would be a perfect time for that. W one thing I did want to uh, reminding, I guess, kind of emphasize because I remember uh, uh, Lynn, you you mentioned this too before in our previous meeting. That uh, I know email may not be the most intuitive way for. I know me personally, I don't usually email customer support, uh, but that is something that you are emphasizing for uh, any kind of technical or customer support uh, with Working Washington Five. Um, so I just wanted to to reemphasize that uh, that it sounds like that's going to be the quickest way. Uh, for folks to get any kind of technical um, technical assistance or technical support um, is through that email uh, email inbox. So uh, we'll, yeah. we'll be sure to have a link to that um, on our website, uh, as well as um, uh, the links that we're posting here in the in the in the chat feature, uh, as well as the links that you mentioned earlier in the presentation. Um, all of that will be available on uh, wahospitality.org as well. We have in our financial relief toolkit. Uh, we've been posting the the UE. Uh, UEI application videos, uh, links to Commerce Grants, um, the, the webpage there as well too. So uh, be sure to check that out uh, if you uh, if you need further assistance. And, and the reason for that too, just to explain the uh, why we're encouraging um, email is because we can better respond with helpful, uh, you know, tutorials, video links and things that um, we can't otherwise provide over the phone. So sometimes it's easier for us to give that that direct assistance by being able, be able to, to provide those links and tutorials and, and PDF information back based off the question too. So it looks like we have some questions. Shannon, did you wanna queue us up? I'd be happy to, yes. Um, so Neil has a question here. Will Working Washington uh, Five uh, grants have interplay with the upcoming hospitality grants program? Um, and Lynn, I wanted to see if you have any insight about that. Yeah, so when it comes to the working Washington Round 5 in the Convention Center, uh, we have no specific requirements um, uh, regarding, the, you know, if we're going to be taking into consideration anything related to the hospitality grants. So I would advise to connect with that program team to see if they're going to be taking anything related to Working Washington Round 5 or the Convention Center grants into consideration when they review their applications. So when, but when it comes to our programs, Working Washington Round 5 Convention Center, 
we're not taking anything related to the hospitality grants into consideration. Um, and uh, another question, Anne asks, if you received an RRF grant and are still using these funds, are you eligible to apply for this grant? Our business is a full service restaurant and we are currently closed and undergoing repairs. Yes, you will be eligible to apply for this grant if you meet the eligibility criteria. Um, uh, Mamasa, I believe it's uh, how you pronounce the name, asks for year 2021 tax return, does, does the income need to map more or less the comparing to year 2019, 2020? There is no income matching requirements. Um, you just have to provide truthful information related to your revenue. So the revenues that you uh, reported for 2019, 2020, and 2021, um, those are the inputs that you would need to provide for your revenues and they would need to match the financial uploads that you provide. Um, and someone asks if the uh, webinar is uh, going to be recorded and it is recorded. Um, uh, so yes, you'll have access to that. Um, Terry asks, do I need, I have to use the same email address for grant five as grant four for working Washington round five as working Washington round four. Yeah, you do, you do not have to use it. I mean, you are able to. So if you want to use the same email address to log in uh, to begin your application for round five that you use for round four, you absolutely can do that. If you have a new email address or want to create a, use a different email address for round five, um, you, can, you can absolutely do that. You would just have to do create an account and then you can actually just log in with a different email address. So it's up to you. Um, that option is up to you, whether or not you want to use the same one round four or not. It's not a requirement. Um, in the, uh, uh, this guest biz business started in October 2019 without enough revenue for that year. Do I still qualify for the grant? Yes, yeah, so the minimum revenue requirement of 10,000, it has to be in 2019 or 2020. So if you didn't make 10,000 minimum revenue in 2019 because you opened the end of the year, you have to meet that minimum revenue requirement in 2020 to be eligible to apply. That minimum revenue requirement is 10,000. To clarify, a foreign corporation will not qualify for this grant. We are doing, we are um, MPLLC doing business in Washington. Well, you have to be an active business operating in Washington state, physically located in Washington state to be eligible to apply for this grant. Um, if I bought the existing business in July, 2019, do, do you consider this fact that 2019 had half year revenue when you compare 2019 revenue with 2020? So yes, I mean, based on your business start date, that would make logical sense, um, you know, if you had more revenues in 2020 than 2019, but you do still have to do um, meet the requirement of experiencing financial hardship. So um, likely, uh, if you're a restaurant, then you were likely forced to close by the governor's mandated closure. So we expect to see that explanation um, of that information in, in uh, the text field where you can provide that information to us and explain that. Um, our for-profit business is owned by three nonprofit user groups who are run by a board. Our business has a board of governors with a president, but we do not have an individual owner. Would the board of governor president be the photo ID necessary for the application? Um, uh, whoever the nonprofit has authorized um, to be able to apply for and uh, sign contracts would be the person who uses the ID for the application. Um, the next question is, how is the amount of awarded grant funding determined for an individual business? I don't remember seeing this during the presentation, but is there a place on the application for applicants to submit a desired amount of funding? There is no place in the application to submit a desired, oops, Shannon, oops sorry, I'm going back. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll find it. Um, there's no, uh, based on the application for you to submit a desired amount of funding. Um, 
at Commerce with our grant programs, we always try to maximize the amount of grant awards distributed. So uh, grant awards will vary. We don't have a minimum or max set yet. Um, so it will be largely dependent on the application vol volume and the magnitude of reported losses. Lynn, I just reread the question. How is the amount of award grant funding determined for an individual business? Um, and I believe you answered that. So we're good, sorry about that. It's okay. Um, <laughs> uh, the next question is, any news on when the hospitality grant program will be released? Um, I do not have any updates, no, unfortunately hoping to get some more information um, soon. And then hopefully we can get some information up on commercegrants.com. That is not a program that uh, me or my team manages. It's managed by a different group within OEDC. So definitely trying to get more coordinated on my end specifically so I can help answer those questions. Um, Kathy and team, um, if you wanna follow up with me afterwards, I can try to do my best to get you some updates. Yep. Um, Tracy asks, uh, can we use a 1040 for years 2019 and 2020, and then use a profit and loss statement for 21. My 2021 tax return is not complete yet. Unfortunately, no, we are requiring, uh, you know, your complete tax returns. Um, so hopefully there is time to prepare those. Um, I know we have a couple, um, you know, the portal will be um, open through September 9th but it does need to be one of the required financial documents listed um, in the program guidelines. Um, the next question is similar. Um, if the 2021 tax return is extended, uh, what can we provide as proof for 2021 revenue? And again, uh, it, this question has come up a lot. Uh, yeah, it, it, needs, it needs to be one of the documents that's listed. Um, those are the only acceptable documents that we're able to use to validate revenues. I have a partner uh, that owns a different business. I only own this business. Could he apply for the other business and I apply for this one? He owns a majority, but I own more than 30%. We are asking that if you own multiple businesses, regardless of the percentage, that you only apply for one business only and it should be your most impacted business. Can an authorized signer of a for-profit S-Corp um, sign and provide an ID in lieu of the owner? An authorized signer? It should be the ID, ID of the owner. Um, Hopefully that clarifies it. If I'm mis misunderstanding the question, Dan, I apologize, um, but it should be the ID of the owner. Uh, so a UEI question here, how can we determine if we already have a UEI number? Um, Michael, do you mind uh, dropping the sam.gov link into the chat there? Um, so if you go to sam.gov, um, that's where you can do a search um, of your business name and see if you already have a UEI number. Um, it, additionally, you can find a UEI um, application registration uh, walkthrough um, on our uh, website as well, as well as uh, some pretty in-depth technical information about the UEI number. The UEI number is a federal requirement. Um, uh, this grant program is a state grant program. And so unfortunately we are not experts um, in the UEI. And so we're gathering as much support and information as possible and listing it on our commercegrants.com page and also on Art Squaw's Working Washington Five um, uh, communications page. Uh, so, uh, Look to those sources uh, for support in the UEI number. We are in the fiscal year July through June. So will the 2021 tax return so, uh, only, so the 2021 return will only cover half the year. Will this work? Um, so for uh, businesses and nonprofits whose fiscal year doesn't align with the calendar year, 
we ask uh, two different things. In the fields where um, you're reporting your annual gross revenue, please report that for the calendar year for 2019, 2020, and 2021. For your tax documentation um, that you upload later, please upload that documentation as you filed it in 2019, 2020, and 2021. Um, the next question is, will there be consideration of extending the deadline with so many people with a 2021 extension to October 15th? No, unfortunately not. Um, the portal deadline is September 9th at 5 p.m. PT. Just to clarify, can we use a different acceptable document for different years, or we can only choose one acceptable document for all three years? Uh, Tracy, you can use uh, different acceptable documents for different years. It just has to be one of the documents um, listed in the list. But if you choose one selection for 2019, for example, as an upload and a different selection for 2020, that is perfectly fine. Um, the next question is, I will have to redo 2020 and 2021 tax forms because of ERTC monies received. Is this going to be a problem? Um, we ask that you provide the tax forms that you submitted um, for those tax years. So whatever forms you actually re report on and officially submitted, um, those are the ones we would want you to upload um, so that we can validate those. Thank you. These are all the open questions that we see in the chat fields. Um, if there's any further clar clarifications that folks need for questions that they already asked, or if there are further questions, please send them our way. Uh, lots of excellent questions. Uh, thank you for uh, submitting those and, and for Shannon, Lynn, and Michael for, uh, for getting those answers. Uh, to our to our members, that's uh, really appreciated. Um, yeah, so if you have any uh, any additional questions, feel free to chat them, uh, put them in the Q and A field uh, now, and we'll try to get those before we wrap up here. Um, just a, another plug that we will we are recording uh, this webinar, and we will have it posted to uh, wahospitality.org uh, later this afternoon, along with the slide deck. Uh, we know there's a lot of information in here, uh, and it might might have missed a, a thing or two along the way. So uh, you'll have an opportunity to view the replay and to view the slide deck uh, this afternoon. Uh, we're going to do our best to also compile the uh, group and compile the frequently asked questions um, that we got today uh, into a frequently asked questions page as well uh, on our website uh, to, to be of uh, further assistance for you. And also just a reminder, uh, one of the, the many values of your membership with the Washington Hospitality Association is your uh, connection with your territory managers. So they are here uh, to be a, a resource for you as well. And I know they've uh, been getting a lot of questions already, and I'm sure those questions will keep coming um, once the, the portal goes live on August 17th. Uh, anything from eligibility questions to technical support to uh, application process, uh, whatever it is, uh, give your territory manager a phone call, email, drop them a line uh, if, you have it, if you need any assistance uh, with the application process, uh, and they will be eager to, uh, to help you. Um, looks like we have one more question that came in from Dan. Thanks, Andy. As a corporate officer and an op and authorized to sign IRS talk tax documents, am I eligible to sign? The owner lives out of state and does not have a Washington ID. Uh, Dan, they don't need a Washington ID. They just need a government issued ID. Um, what is the hospitality grant program? The hospitality grant program is an upcoming grant program. It is managed by a separate team here at OEDC. So I don't want to misspeak and get, give um, the wrong details, but I can follow up uh, with Kathy and provide some updates uh, to Kathy and she can get it out um, to the group. Um, we have a UEI number, but the sam.gov site shows the registration not yet complete. 
will the application be accepted? Um, so uh, when you apply uh, for the Working Washington Round 5 or Convention Center Awards, um, there is a place where you, uh, we, where you are asked to submit your UEI number. Um, uh, if the registration is not yet complete, we encourage you to wait until, um, wait to submit the completed application until the deadline to give time for that registration to be complete. Um, as Michael and Lynn mentioned, uh, we really encourage you, if you have not yet registered for your UEI number, to do it now um, so that there is time be before the September 9th deadline uh, to complete that registration. And, and if there is still issues, for example, um, you know, you have to, you know, apply um, and you don't have your UEI number yet, sometimes there's there's technical issues with receiving it and um you know I, we understand that our businesses are working through that with sam.gov to to get their uei numbers as quickly as possible um you can absolutely uh, submit your application with that one um you know you can apply without it it's best to have it but of course you can apply without it we understand and we will be sending out additional forms to those applicants that did not provide one in the application for whatever reason in an effort to collect that UEI number after the portal closes. Yeah, yeah, I just, we, oh, this ahead, is Samantha Kathy. and I think Kathy unmuted herself too to add some comments on the hospitality grants. And just uh, to clarify, the intent of that grant program is for uh, folks who applied for federal um, restaurant revitalization funds, but were, uh, were awarded, but never got any. So the, the government affairs team worked this, this year with the legislature to get some grant funding available. So I just wanted to circle back with that and then let Kathy add as well. In order to receive those monies, if, if you are, uh, I'm sorry, if you applied for the IRF RRF and did not receive funds, this 85 million has been carved out to address that. It won't be as much money as you would have received on RRF, but it's money and it's federal money. So you will need a UEI in order to receive the funds. So at any rate, please go get a UEI number. You're gonna need it if you fall into that category, please. And as soon as we know when that goes live, we'll last. Um, I know everybody's anxious to have it. So uh, Lynn and Sam and I will all confer and get connected and we'll figure that out. Yep. Yeah. And and, and another plug uh, for following the, the association on, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, uh, YouTube, uh, sign up for our email list if you're not already on it. Uh, we have all this information on our website. So yeah, once, once we get uh, that information, once the program is uh, getting ready to go live and they have all the details in place, uh, we will absolutely, like Kathy said, we'll blast that out on our various different channels. And if you aren't already a member, or excuse me, uh, and uh, have not asked to join the Washington Hospitality Member Facebook group, please do so. That's a really easy way to keep track of everything. Yeah. All righty. It looks like we have uh, wrapped up the Q&A portion here. Here, like I said, great questions. We will have all of this posted to our website uh, as soon as we possibly can. We'll get at least the video and the slide deck up this afternoon, and and if we can get the uh, questions uh, compiled and and uh, organized, uh, we'll do that as well. But we'll have those up uh, shortly after for sure. So, uh, with that, again, uh, thank you for to uh, Michael and Lynn uh, and Shannon uh, for your presentations and your. Uh, your expertise in answering the questions that came in. So we appreciate your time today, uh, Kathy and Sam, uh, you as well for helping out uh, on the association side. Uh, with that, I'll uh, bid everybody happy, uh, have a good afternoon, uh, have a good weekend, and uh, we will catch you next time. Thank you for joining us. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Thank you.